Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Well, welcome every day, everybody. It's a uh, rainy day here in Indianapolis, and we actually have an empty office, which is rare for our Friday shows. Uh, but I think everybody just stayed home because it was it was just so gray and gloomy outside. Um, but on the show today, it won't be gray and gloomy because uh, we have Paul Denae on on the line. Paul, are you there? I'm here, Doug. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, for people that don't know Paul, um, we always open the show and kind of introduce him. But Paul and I go um, way back, and I and I hate to admit how far because it was back in the days. <laughs> I think of of, of where, where you were practically developing your own blog, but. Uh, but you said that you had a story behind it, and, and, and my memory doesn't serve me that well, so let's hear it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, you know, this was back in the day when, when we had just started blogging, right? So I started in 2006. I think you started, you know, shortly thereafter. Um, my blog dates back to, uh, I don't know, March of 2006. So I'm looking at this funny thing called Technorati. You remember Technorati when Technorati oh, yeah. was big? And Technorati had this score, right? And I'm looking at other people with scores and stuff like that, and I see this guy, Doug Carr, who's got this score. It was like, I don't know, 500 or something. It was enormous, right? And I looked at it with awe, and I went and I looked at your blog, and your blog was younger than mine. So it's essentially like being on a, on a track and seeing this guy, like, blow by you. And I'm like, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> so I don't know if you remember, but I got you on one of my podcasts, and my podcast was, you know, how to – uh, how to blog successfully blog uh, with you, and I was interviewing you on your tips for how to how to pass someone like myself, right, and 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 do it in a really you know good natural blogging kind of way. So uh, I think it's really nice that we've come full circle here. So I start. do remember actually now because you had a at the time you were really using this this cool interface to publish it on your site and everything. That's right. Um, that's right. I had a, had a custom interface called, oh, John, God, I can't remember what the name of it was. Uh, and you could, you could break out the question, so I could ask yeah. you the question. And I'd get SEO in the question, and all I wanted was the SEO, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, let's ask all these cool questions, and I'd phrase them in a way that, you know, if someone was searching for, you know, how to blog and, and get recognition quickly or influence quickly, you know, would probably have been one of the questions I asked you at the time. Uh, uh, you know, you'd get the SEO value for it, right? How how fantastic is that? Yeah, it, it was it was a heck of a system, and you know, you could ignore the conversations that you didn't really care about, so you could jump straight to a topic that you right. wanted. To. Yeah, yeah, it was it was broken right. up nicely. All yeah. those all those cool dot com things that didn't that didn't out, outlive themselves. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Right. They they eventually got bought, and they're part of some bigger thing now, but they don't focus on that. Unfortunately, but podcasting podcasting is having a bit of a renaissance now that uh, you know Apple broke out their podcasting app and and stuff. I find I'm listening to more podcasts these days. You know, I am as well, and and um, one of my favorites. Well, uh, I'm going to embarrass myself now, but um, I love it so much now that I actually got a new stereo put in my car just so <laughs> that I can connect my iPhone. And and listen to podcasts and audio books uh, since I'm in the car quite a bit. Uh, and um, and one of the one of the great apps that I love is Stitcher. Um, absolutely, Stitcher, okay. yeah. Right. It's 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 just a really simple, um, you know, podcasting. It, it's kind of like Google Reader for podcasting, uh -huh. uh, but but very very well done and easy to search, easy to find topics, uh, easy to find people on. So if you haven't yeah. If you haven't, check it, check it out. It's really cool. Uh, I'm going to check it out, but I'm also going to try to one-up you here, which is, you know, my, my car is circa, you know, 2001, right? So instead of a new stereo, I'm thinking new car, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just so I can listen to my so, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to Sorry to one-up you, but, you know, you passed me blogging, so I had to try to find some way to... <laughs> well, you know, there were was, was some silent years there for me, too. I think we both... You know, we both transitioned kind of from, you know, corporate back to social, corporate back to social, and and uh, I think, uh, you know, I think there was probably two roles where I had a couple of years where I was just working so hard that I couldn't, I couldn't really invest the time and energy that it took to keep the blog going, and it wasn't yeah. until, um, you know, it was really a few years ago I was kind of disappointed that I, I, you know, I was watching these folks just take off, right? You know, right. I mean. 
um, you know, Robert Scoble, of course, you know, oh, three yeah. off and and um and I and I thought, you know, had I stuck with it and had I, you know, continued to put the effort into it, I absolutely could have, you know, gotten to that level. Right. And 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 that's not saying anything about talent. That's just saying about persistence and 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 really pushing the button. Um, it, and you've probably found that out too. It's just a matter of sticking with it. It's all about momentum. It's all about you know continuing to to invest in it. And um, once you stop, boy, it's just like going off a cliff. Yeah, you know, it, it's funny because uh, I mean the way I thought of it, you know, you and I were individuals blogging, and and that's just not really sustainable, right? Yeah. I mean, we can have all the thoughts we we want and continue to blog every day, but you know, the multi-person blogs, the Huffington Post, I mean, all those guys, Read Write Web, they passed us like with a fury, and awesome. uh, and, and some of those guys even started after we did and and just took off. So, you know, with the, it, it, from a, a model like that, I think did did you open your blog up? to take individuals, uh, individual posts from other people at some point? We do. Um, you know, I've always encouraged the guest blogging, but I've, I've never really had the um, had people that came back over and over and over. Even the people that have written, you know, 10 or 20 posts on my blog, um, they faltered, you know, eventually and, and kind of went away, uh, and then they come back when they want to promote something. <laughs> Right, um, right. But now it's now it's to a point, you know, I still write 99% of the content on there and share it, but I've got a couple of people that, that are always willing to, to push stuff my way. And yeah. what, what, what really helps now is that I get a lot of PR push, too. I'm definitely on all of the lists uh, for PR companies to get a hold of. So I find out about new technologies. Um, you know, I, I probably get 10 or 20 pitches a day. And, oh, that's cool. Yeah, and and that that helps from a you know a content standpoint where I'm. Uh, it used to be you know I was searching for content all the time and trying to find you know uh, unique information because I think your blog is is very very similar to mine. We don't really care about the news. We we cared about what was impacting people yeah. and and how marketers could utilize the information, and um, that was always a tough grind you know, because uh, there was so much dot-com news out there that was blurring the landscape. But now there's there's so many stories out there and so many tips and so many tricks, and, and we're going to talk to you about some of them because you've really gotten hands down and, and just become an incredible expert on Facebook marketing. Oh, um, thank you. Thank you, yeah. Oh, absolutely, and and, um, and doing it right, and, and that's one of the things that I want to talk, talk with you about today, but but now it's now it's to a point where we've got sponsors, so they you know we're helping them write some content, and we have a research team now which we didn't have before. Um, so when I when I just want to do research on you know ten different tools in a different um, in a different industry, uh, they they take it and run with it. Now we do infographics quite a bit uh, for our clients, and and for uh, and many of those are marketing tech companies. So it's it is getting a lot easier for me to to get content, and I I have to thank, of course, you'll hear the ads, but our sponsors too, because without them, I wouldn't have been able to make the investment into, you know, getting on a better infrastructure with uh, WP Engine. I got to give them a shout out, and uh, and and then um, getting you know sponsored posts, uh, not sponsored posts, but uh, sponsored advertising on there. All right. of it has helped me you know, promote the site more, uh, buy advertising on other sites, uh, which is which is continuing to grow the blog. So Yeah. Well, you know, one of the questions you asked me, you know, back in the day, probably on that podcast, the first one we ever did was, you know, where are we going with all this? And and I don't think you and I really knew and, and we were just doing it to do it. And and your approach, which differed than mine, was you know, mine was like, I'm gonna go learn this one thing and learn it really well and take whatever I learn about it and as soon as I learn it, put it on my blog, right? <laughs> you know, right. so there was an immediate place for me to take a learning and put it and, and use that as an attraction and that and that turned out to be Facebook. And you know, thank God it, it happened because you know my, I was doing this blogging thing and searching for meaning, right? Like like all of us lost in the in the in the desert looking for meaning here. And uh, Wiley came and approached me 
and said, well, what, what, what kind of book would you want to write if we, if we were to write a book? And I said, well, I'm, I'm kind of fascinated with this thing that just sort of opened up for companies. It's called Facebook. And they're like, ah, we already have a book called Facebook, Mar- uh, Facebook for Dummies. And I'm like, well, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people using it for business, Facebook marketing for dummies. They're like, forget about it. <laughs> and, right. uh, you know, so I had, I had written up this whole thing for them and, and uh, then I kept sending them notes like, hey, you know, remember that proposal I sent you for Facebook marketing for dummies? Did you see that they just hit 300 million people, 350 million people, 400 million people? So, like, I've, I finally said to them, like, how many million people is it going to take me to convince you that there is a market for uh, marketing on Facebook, right? And, uh, and that's when that nut finally cracked and, and it opened up and, uh, you know, I eventually got the book deal. And, and since then, we've written three books, Facebook Marketing for Dummies edition one, two, and three, uh, and then a separate book called Facebook Advertising for Dummies, um, which is just really focused on the advertising component of it. And, uh, and that book I, I, got, uh, I sold to Wiley in the course of about 60 seconds because I asked them the following question. I said, do you have a book called Google AdWords for Dummies? And they're like, yes, it happens to be one of our top 10 books. I'm like, well, I have the next Google AdWords for Dummies. It's called Facebook Advertising for Dummies. And they're like, right. done. So it's contract, <laughs> contract on the way. <laughs> right. So the moral of the story for your listeners is be careful what you, what you wish for because you just might get it. <laughs> well, the, the great thing about, you know, you've put out, you know, what, five? Yeah, five, five books. books. Yeah, wow. Five books. And, yeah. and with, with Wiley, it, it really does. I mean, it, uh, I don't know about you, but when I did corporate blogging for dummies, that first one was really painful. It was, it was to, you know, really just trying to come to this marriage between the, d- the dummy's voice, you know, and still get my message out. And, yeah, um, yeah, 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 and, yeah. But now that I've done one, you know, I, I can't wait to, to do the next. Now, with corporate blogging for dummies, it's funny because it's, the topic has drifted off, right? It, it's not right. Corp- now it's not corporate blogging. Now it's content marketing. Right. Um, that's right. That's right. <laughs> everybody's everybody's utilizing a blog and utilizing Facebook and utilizing social, but but uh, but now it's it's transitioned. So I don't know that they have a content marketing for dummies. I'm sure they do, uh, but uh, but I'm, I might have to talk to them again about about that and retouching on it. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. I remember I remember getting the book. I don't know whether you sent it to me or I bought it or some combination of the two. By the way, they do have content marketing for dummies. I just looked it up online. Oh. Uh, and uh and anyway, so it it was a monster. It was a big one. It yeah. was a big boy. It was probably well, we, if, if mine were 360, your had your 360 pages, yours had to be 500 something maybe. I can't I I'm I'm not sure what the page count was, but we we really did want to make it um you know, and this is this is kind of where it's come. Uh it, we didn't want to just make it about, you know, writing a WordPress press blog. Yeah. We wanted to really make it about the whole social media. So we had a we had a legal chapter in there that I actually had an attorney, David Katzer, help me write. We had, you know, so for social policies and, and internal, um, you know, developing your social policies and protecting yourself on and offline. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, we had, you know, Facebook integration. We had, we had, we tried to touch on, you know, not just, you know, how to blog, which was, uh, you know, I wouldn't say easy, but, but you know, that was step one. Um, yeah. You know, it was, it was how to do everything else. And, and it's a lot like Facebook, right? Sure, you can throw up a Facebook page, but now try to attach a community to it. And, uh, and that, that takes a lot more effort and time. Right. I'm looking on Amazon, and yours was 100 pages more than mine. So you, I wrote three quarters of a book, and you wrote a, a full book in that, in that case, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's funny. Well, you, yeah, but you got me because you're you're on your, you know, probably your sixth is coming. <laughs> well, you know, I, it's, it's interesting you say it because I, I got to the point where. You know, with no with no disrespect to Wiley, it's not a, a huge revenue generator, right? I'm not buying sure. any new cars with a with a new iPhone connector in it, right? Uh, so uh, I, it it came to the point where you know I, I I needed to spend more time you know doing real work, and and so I said to them, all right, I'm I'm kind of done with this, and uh, and and the, and I've moved on from that, they've moved on from me, and that's all that's all good, and we're all happy about it, and uh, so I'm not saying anything that's not uh, public here, but uh, you know. 
know, I, I got to the point, quite frankly, where it's all right. You got five books. All right, so he's a five-time author, a six-time author, seven-time author. How many? You know, it doesn't. It does The 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 uh, benefits don't accrue every time you get another book underneath that name, right? So I'm like, all right, that's that's it. And I also tried to get up and out into Wiley proper, into their non-dummies section. Right. And that's that's and because I thought that was the play, right? Uh, take the take the five parlay that into a into a real book with them, um, a non-dummies book with them. And uh, believe it or not, that's that's pretty hard to do. And yes. uh, and they said to me like, oh, if you we, 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 you know we don't promote them as hard, you have to promote them even harder on that side. I'm like, geez, I was <laughs> I was doing a lot of promotion, you know, as it was, uh, you know, bl- not just blogging but eBooks and other things to to help stoke the sales of them. So uh, I'm kind of glad I'm kind of glad I'm hanging up my hat at least for now uh, yeah. in in the in the book writing area. I tend to agree with you. I think I think um, a couple things was I, I was I, I mean same same as you. I was totally happy with my experience with Wiley. They were so supportive from a writing standpoint. I was incredibly shocked. It, it blew me off my feet, honestly. That that uh, that the marketing of the book was really up to me. Um, yeah. And, and I and I and I honestly, when the book got published, I. I really didn't have all of that set up. I really didn't have that that distribution uh, set up, and I and I and I'm, you know, I'm disappointed now in myself that that I didn't foresee that or talk to another author about that. So for anybody, you know, thinking about writing a book out there and getting with the getting with any publisher, you know, you've got to have your own promotion strategy, and you've really got to push it yourself. These guys have, of course, they've got their distribution, and that's what's so valuable about you know, going with Wiley or Pearson or O'Reilly or any of those, is they have this incredible distribution. But the fact is, is that if you want to get your name out there and you want to get yourself out there as an expert for speaking opportunities and and everything else, that's totally up to you. And and I see some of my friends doing it well. You know, uh, Jason Falls and Eric Eric Deckers with, uh, you know, no, no BS social media. Um, those guys just nailed it. They 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 did such a great job, you know, from a marketing standpoint with their launch, and then Jay Bear with Convincing to Convert, you know, um, and and I, I I look at those guys now, and and what's funny about you saying that is, I've taken, um, you know, uh, I'm hibernating right now from writing a book as well, and <laughs> okay. and a and a lot of it is because. I don't want to just write the book. I want to write the book and really have that marketing strategy um, just nailed. Uh, and, and and I know that, you know, that's half the effort. It, it, almost, if not more. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, let's take a take a break, and when we get back, let's let's dig in. Let's let's talk about some of the use cases that you've seen. Um, from a Facebook marketing standpoint, there's a we talked before the show just that there's a lot of negativity out there on Facebook, but the fact is is that it's working. It's working for many many companies. So let's talk about those positives. Uh, we'll we'll do a few uh, a few ads here, and just just I didn't warn you before the show, Paul, but the mic is on during the, the ads. <laughs> okay, all right. I'll... So a lot of people take the opportunity to cough, and it's pretty funny. So <laughs> okay, all right. I'll keep it quiet over here. <laughs> all right. Delivera has been providing email software and professional services for more than 13 years. Delivera helps businesses and organizations execute effective email marketing campaigns by providing dynamic software and professional services, from full-out consulting engagements to help when you need it in areas such as design, production, deliverability, and testing. Voted one of the 2011 best places to work in Indiana and one of Inc. 5000's fastest growing companies. Delivera partners with businesses and organizations across all industries and verticals and truly opens its doors each and every day to put the customer first. To learn more about Delivera, visit www.delivera.com or call 866-915-9465. Tell them you heard about Delivera from the Marketing Technology Blog. Each and every week, you get bombarded with hundreds of emails, dozens of meetings, countless requests, updates, and reminders, and a deluge of -of out-of-control deadlines and tasks. More information and distraction means less communication, 
which affects your productivity, efficiency, and your sanity. At MindJet, we offer the tools to help you get the job done. MindJet takes that information overload and organizes it visually in terms people can understand and shares it with those who actually need it. Work fast, work smart. Go to MindJet.com to learn more. Formstack, an online form builder that has become a leader in creating, managing, and hosting online forms, is your solution to data collection. Formstack provides small businesses and nonprofits an easy to use form building tool to easily collect and manage data. Create surveys, order forms, and event registrations with no web skills needed. To learn more and register for a free 14 day trial, visit formstack.com. And there we go. We are back with Paul Dene. Uh Paul, uh, you, you recently, well, I shouldn't say recently. I'm not sure how long ago it was. You're working uh, as global vice president of, of Maximizer now? Yeah, I moved to Maximizer from Networked Insights. Um, Networked Insights was uh, or is a company that uh, was doing social media analytics. So it was a natural place for me to be with all those books and stuff like that. Um, but social media analytics, man, that is a uh, a field where you've got just a ton of competitors. I mean, I, I, there there has to be. I mean, anybody who can take an API of of data and throw it into a database and start querying it is is immediately a social media analytics company, right? So right. Uh, so the, all those folks who were social media marketing companies all started to well, not all of them, but you know, a good portion of them that weren't making it in that space, up to and including even a buddy media, which was just doing social campaigns for a while. While, you know, moved into either some sort of a tool like they like they did, Power Tools for Facebook, or analytics, uh, which made a lot of sense. And, um, and so, a really good, uh, interesting firm, a lot of smart people. Um, but you know, the 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 field is changing every day. I mean, we were we were talking about writing the books before the commercial break, and you know, I mean, writing a book on a on Facebook that changes its its uh, UI every week, you know, in some cases every day, uh, is crazy, right? So, I mean. These things were changing as quickly. A lot of these companies were changing as quickly and and moving and evolving. So now with Maximizer, Maximizer is a a web, uh, mobile, and social optimization firm. And uh, so we're helping people create the ideal experience on either their website, a mobile tablet site, or a social site. So, you know, good fun there. That's awesome. And I I agree with you. You know, the funny thing, I, I literally just wrote today, uh, because I was checking out a, a new company uh, called Intelligence, I'm uh-huh. not sure, and and they're a social marketing intelligence firm, and and they're trying to take it a step further. And one of the things that I noticed while I was, you know, reading through their blog and their documentation, and and I said it on the site is, um, you know, the the problem in my eyes with social analytics at this point is that it's 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 always just about eyeballs and then clicks. You know, and it's and it's nobody's really paying attention to the patterns that are taking shape. And three of the things that I wrote was, you know, there's really kind of three a- activities that happen in social. One is just people watching and reading and listening to you, and they use that information and they might buy your product or service. And then there's other people that interact, so they're providing feedback on your product and information, asking for help, uh, providing advice, you know. Uh, you know, learning how to utilize it or better leverage it. And then there's this third, and that's these people that have influence in their own communities that share the information. And it's unfortunate that the social analytics today, they don't really show you those patterns at all. They don't show you, they don't differentiate, you know, an audience member that, that is clicking on your material versus an audience member that's, you know, uh, just, you know, provided a huge, a ton of promotion for your material. Right, right. Actually, you, you just nailed it, right? This is that you, it, what, everyone listen. What he just said, <laughs> that, yeah. that is like there, that, that's marketing nirvana, right? So let me let me paint the picture because I've actually done this and mapped this, right? So if you take your Twitter feeds, your Facebook feeds, you know, your LinkedIn, all of these, you know, social activities, all these blogging, you know, and you're looking at the number of followers you have there. Managing the number of followers is is managing to the lowest common denominator. What you're looking for is the social engagement, right? Right, which is 
you know the nirvana everyone's looking for right now is is you know how do you create customer engagement across these? But you can't say that a like is the same kind of engagement as someone who commented or or you know shared it with a friend or posted it on their you know uh, on their page, right? So you have to score them differently, right? So if you look at the number of followers and you're growing the number of followers, you can you can assign a nominal value like like I did. I don't know if you've, you've I'm sure you've read like the Vitru yep. study that was out there. It was like three dollars and sixty cents. So use whatever value you want, right? A buck, you know, for every person that you've got. But if that person likes something, you, you know, that's that's like more than just showing up and turning up and liking your page. You they actually like something that you did, right? So that should be two bucks, you know. And and if they share it, it should be like five bucks, right? You know. And so you create sort of a scaled version of of these social activities, you know, commenting on it, sharing it with a friend, uh, posting it to your site, uh, you know, you know, any other um, form that you can think about, blogging about it, you know, something in this zone. All of those things, or even up to and including, let's say, filling out a form on your site, like they've gone from that beginning all the way to the end, that should be worth, you know, a hundred dollars, right? So if you if you right. can take that scale and back it down to a buck and fill in the blanks in between, and then take all those actions and score them, it's actually not as hard as it sounds. Everybody on the phone, yeah. uh, <laughs> because you do get certain intelligence from from these platforms like Facebook Insights. You can then download that stuff and and then score them appropriately, and and then you can go your team. You can say, okay, team, we've got you know 10,000 people on our Facebook platform. We want and and this number, you know, the the amount of media equivalent value we are creating with that Facebook platform is. Um, you know, five hundred thousand dollars. We want to grow that to six hundred thousand dollars this quarter, and and you know you you can. Uh, actually watch that grow as you're going through it. It's almost like lead nurturing, but for social, right? And and so that when when I think of people who are doing it really right, they're really looking at, you know, uh, taking the numbers, backing it down into a monetary value, a media equivalent kind of value, almost like a CPM but different, and uh, and and monitoring that as it goes forward, so that they they've got a, a way to prove at any moment on any day what they're doing uh, in social to the their senior executives, and they don't worry about, hey, this this social stuff. Is there any value in it? They don't worry about anybody asking that question. Right, right, and eventually, of course, they tie that to actual revenue numbers. So that's correct. Yeah. So and and then they can readjust what those values are based on that, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that revenue thing. Right. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's you know, I, I here's what I'll throw out is. I think a lot of companies are struggling literally just to launch, not not necessarily get to that next level of sophistication. Yeah. Um, you know, what what kind of tips do you have to, to a company? You know, it was a lot like blogging. It took time and momentum. You know, you got right. ten you got ten people that followed you and then you got a hundred and then all of a sudden you had, you know, five hundred and, and but it still wasn't until you got the thousands that, that you actually started to see you know, the revenue. Now, the great thing about it that I tell people is, unlike an advertisement, these are people that are engaged, and you're continuing to increase that value of that audience. So just like you said, as you're building that Facebook audience or that Facebook community on your page and you're adding those dollars, you know, it's it's basically you're putting those dollars in a bank, right? And And then one day you're going to be able to actually withdraw from that. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, hopefully. Yeah, when those people, you know, actually do convert and, and cash out with you. But what do you say to those customers that are just really struggling to, to just start it off from, you know, from scratch that, that aren't making it anywhere? Right. So, you know, there's a lot of real basics that, that go on uh, for folks. And, and so let's let's cover it at the, the absolute beginning of the spectrum, right? You've got people who have, you know, 100 uh, fans or whatever on their uh, of their page. And, you know, they're just not leveraging it. Uh, they may be posting, I don't know, once a week or something. It, it's a little bit of a game of the more you post, the more uh, interaction you'll get. But they feel like, all right, if I'm posting something and there's 100 people who are potentially listening, you've got to 
think that maybe one out of every 10 is actually listening at that point. So, you know, 10%. So it's actually 10 people might actually catch that, right? So you've got to grow that number. That's why everyone, including Coke, you know, ran after, you know, trying to get as many people onto their page as humanly possible. And, and whether that was through Facebook advertising or whether that was through email marketing to get people to do it, even, you know, tagging it in their advertising, you know, putting it in their, you know, I don't know, on their homepage. I mean, you've seen everybody do this, and that this is, you know, finding ways to sneak it in wherever you can, and, and that's, you know, using every tactic you can bring to the table that, that you've got. Now, if you're a B2B marketer versus a B2C marketer, you maybe don't have so many tactics. You don't have TV ads. You don't have product to stick it on. But, you know, maybe you've got a newsletter. Maybe you've got an area on the newsletter that you can say, hey, um, uh, you know, heard on Facebook, right? Of people that I've talked to and I've, I've told them about that tactic have come back to me and said, that's like the number one thing that's clicked on in my, in my email newsletter is heard on Facebook. Uh, and, you, you know, they usually have some sort of smart uh, comment that somebody's made to put in there and drive people over there. And in order to see the whole page, you've got to like the page. And bingo, you know, you're starting to leverage your 25,000 person or 250,000 person email mailing list to drive uh, people to your Facebook page, right? So you've you got to use some very basic uh, tactics to, to get people to do it. Uh, you know, basically asking your, your constituents, uh, you know, like the page. You know, have you actually <laughs> asked your <laughs> – have you sent out an email or have you asked? Ask your, you know, your customers and clients, can you like my page? I mean, you know, it's just, they're just not going to do it just because they're surfing around and looking for your page every night. You know, that on Facebook, they've got to be asked to do something. So, you know, make the ask is, you know, another very key way uh, of doing it. Um, advertising it. You know, I wrote a whole book on that particular area because I, I believed in Facebook advertising. And, uh, and there's so many ways to do this so creatively. It, it actually gets really fun, right? So if you're if you're targeting certain companies, you can be, you know, asking them to like your page or putting out content on your page that they might be interested in. It's sort of the classic content marketing and get them to come over and like the page. You know, uh, obviously, uh, you know, friends and fans of the page, you know, trying to get them to come over and like your page. You know, you've got so many ways to do it, and and um, uh, I just don't see a lot of people using it in the way, and I think you alluded to this at the top of the call, a lot of people using it in the way that you think they might. I think you've just got a lot of people, you know, getting on there because it's the latest shiny object and maybe they were asked by their CEO, you know, why don't we have one of these pages, right? But but think it's only, it's still in its infancy, right? Despite the fact that they've got a billion people on the platform, you know, one out of every seven people on the freaking planet. But, you know, it, 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 it's, you know, what, seven, eight, almost eight years old, right? But the right. tactic of marketing on that platform is maybe five years old, right? So if you parallel that with SEO or SEM, like when Google AdWords came out in 2001, by 2011, it, it was fully baked in the marketplace, right? Everyone and their brother was doing it, and they were probably doing it reasonably well, right? I, I'd argue people are still not doing it all that great, and they're just feeding the meter. But, you know, I, I think we're, we're midway in that sort of transition towards everybody, you know, marketing on Facebook correctly. Uh, and, and getting it right. So, uh, and unfortunately, they keep changing the rules. Unlike you know Google uh, AdWords, they didn't change the rules after 2001. There's you know slight adjustments. You know you've seen changes in the news feed, in their edge rank algorithm, and and um, you know promoted uh, stories and you know sponsored stories and all these other vehicles to to get the word out. And of course, some of them are are high dollar uh, tickets to be able to play in that. The the thing that amazed me that I read about uh, Facebook earlier this week, and I actually sent it over to uh, to a group, and I said I hope you guys are behind this because this is pretty killer. Is for a select group of Facebook marketers, there's starting to show them the, the data that no one else can see behind their page, which is what other brands do the people on your page you know, like, and what other bands, and what other TV shows, and what other, you know, authors, and what other, you know, part oh, of wow. profile, right? And, and that is kind of like the really sexy stuff, right? This is stuff that some of these social media analytics firms are, you know, uh, attempting to get, but, you know, they're getting it out of Facebook, right? And they don't get all the data. Facebook's got all the data, right? You know, no one actually gets the whole feed. So um, that is kind of nifty stuff. And, well, it uh, opens up. It opens up a world of opportunities. You know, it, it, when we were doing, you know, back in the day when we were doing direct marketing and direct mail, and you know, we would 
do merges and purges with other people's databases to try to find, you know, what the overlap and commonality. Right. If, if you can sit there and you can take Facebook and you're a, you know, a key advertiser and you can say, oh, well, you know, uh, people that like, you know, and, and one of our clients is Angie's List, people that like Angie's List right. also like X, Y, and Z. Well, now that provides Angie's List with great opportunities to go sponsor those sites, work on partnerships with them, you know, uh, cross-promote on Facebook, you know, to, to get those audiences more engaged. Wow, that's, that's opening up a, yeah. a huge opportunity. That that is pretty killer. And one thing I wrote about in all three of the editions of you know, Facebook marketing for dummies is the the idea of promotions on there, right? I mean, everyone loves free stuff, but as a B two B marketer, I don't have a lot of free software to give around. I'm sure you don't have free corporate blogging software to right. give people, right? So, so what kind of promotions can you do? And and being creative about that, whether it's some kind of a contest or you know uh, some sort of a giveaway, you know that that kind of an idea. Uh, I I've done that. At at Avaya, where we were, you know, trying to give away a, um, a small business, you know, um, internet, um, IP, you know, IP telephony uh, system, right, for, right. for people, and uh, you know, we allowed people to upload videos and do cool stuff, and we got a lot of play out of that, right? So you, you can, even in B two B, you can you can make it kind of sexy. I saw a campaign. Um, uh, from a, a company called Question Pro, they're an uh, online survey uh, software, and they're running a contest on their you know Facebook page, asking users to burn their comment cards, right? And the idea behind the contest is that the era of paper feedback is dead, and that hospitality needs to be more of a you know digital solution, such as you know QR codes and you know things like you would you and I would be familiar with, right? And and I, I kind of dig the campaign. Everyone should check it out on 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 Facebook. It's Question Pro. And the contest is uh, burn your comment cards, and um, so uh, it, it, the, these people are coming up with creative ideas to get their message across, grow their fan base. It's not a lot of money, uh, and, and it's just a good creative idea. And I know they're hard to come by. You know, believe me, I've racked my brain for for some of them myself. But um, <laughs> you know, when you, when you come up with something cool, people recognize it as cool, and and it and it goes from there. Well, it's kind of. You know, sometimes it takes three failures before you get one that really launches and takes off right as well. So, you know, it's it's all that testing and you know measuring what their response is and and keep going, keep coming up with more ideas. And um, you don't have to do the same as everybody else. You can come up with unique ones as well. So, yeah, yep. I'm I'm on their blog. So yeah, win a round trip airfare ticket for two. That's right. right. That's yeah, right. That's a, that's a that's a pretty nice that's a pretty nice prize. <laughs> right, and and a lot of those are through a lot of those. Uh, the back end for that is Wildfire app. I wrote about them in my first book. In fact, they just got sure. bought by by Google, and I kick myself because I was their first check for like seventy bucks. Right? I mean, I I found these guys. I really dug their software. Victoria Ransom, who's the CEO, got on the phone with me, gave me an interview so I could put it in the book, and uh, we ran a contest when uh, Facebook Marketing for Dummies first came out, and I probably gave her her first check. I was all like 70 bucks so don't get so excited but uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, but you know now they got bought by Google Jesus you know I mean unbelievable consolidation and stuff that's happened in this industry and you know and, and, and everyone's looking for you know the latest shiny object but you know those guys are the, the leaders in this space of like Facebook kind of promotions that's why I wanted to mention them should give a shout out to those guys well and it's it, it, it'll be interesting to see what what Google actually does with them too you know, the, the the interesting thing that I see sometimes is that a lot of these larger companies, you know, swallow up these smaller ones because um, these, you know, these smaller ones are agile and they have an edge on the industry. They have, you know, that inside, you know, like Wildfire, obviously they were one of the first, you know, app platforms out there. And, and um, what I'm interested in seeing is what Google actually accomplishes with them um, yeah. or, or whether they just, you know, silently disappear like like so many uh -huh. other things that, yeah. that get out there. I, I sometimes, it, you know, it, it concerns me sometimes when people are doing these acquisitions that I think sometimes the acquisition is simply to try to get the clients. Sometimes it's to get the developers, you know, and, and oftentimes they, they really don't care about, you know, the actual product itself and, and, and whether, you know, it gets enhanced or, you know, swallowed up and goes away. 
Right, exactly. Uh, you, you would think it would be the, the the strategy of you know just make them go away, kind of a thing. But uh, I don't know. It remains to be seen. I'm sure those guys uh, being bought by Google don't really care at this point. They're, yeah. probably, they're on they're on a beach somewhere, and we're here on Blog Talk Radio, right? I mean, yeah. There's, yeah. There's, there's no there's no justice here for, yeah. for us. <laughs> there will be someday. I know it. I know it. Well, the the irony is that your blog is called Marketing Darwinism. So, yeah. <laughs> well, some people make it, some people don't. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's a question I have for you, and and because you and I were thinking the same thought when you titled your blog Marketing Technology Blog, do you, do you see? And I think I've seen you talk about this. I just wanted to, to air this out. Do you see the marketing technologist as a role emerging? Because I think I see this kind of everywhere I'm looking these days. I do. I, I think the challenge that marketers are faced with right now is that um, there's just not enough resources to go around. Uh, we, you know, the economics of marketing, we have more channels, we have more complications, we have more inner channel uh, chatter and conversation and automation, um, and, and we have less resources. Uh, yeah. So naturally, you have got to be somewhat of a technologist to be able to take advantage and leverage some of these platforms and understand, you know, how they're going to make your vision come true and really leverage them uh, and, and get a return on investment out of them. So I, I, I think it has. Now, that said, I still think um, the traditional brand marketer I have incredible respect for because, uh, there's still an opportunity for companies to craft their message and their image online across all these channels uh, to unify them and to, to carry a, you know, a very efficient, effective um, messaging, you know, and, and brand across across them. And and a lot of companies, I think, do a poor job of that. Um, yeah. So so it's you know it's it, it it's mix and match, I guess. Um, some of the things that I've seen that are exciting are I've seen some companies go to a CRO, you know, a chief, uh -huh, revenue, right. a chief revenue officer. Right. And I, and I really like that because it, it takes and lumps in sales and marketing and, and you know, takes care of those silos and, and you know, dependencies of, of acquisition. Um, but the technology side is one that I see still suffering with even with our clients. Um, we have clients that are are virtually held hostage by their IT team. You know they can't they can't progress uh, because the technology is owned by you know the technology department, right. and so the marketers can't move forward. So I love it when you know when when a lot of a lot of people bring us into that mix, and a lot of people bring um, you know me into those walls to help them fight that fight, uh, and and and. Um, it's unfortunate that it's still a fight right now. But so long answer, you know, that was a long answer. But I think yes, the, uh, understanding that technology is absolutely imperative nowadays if you're a marketer. Uh, and then uh, I think there's some more opportunity down the line to be a CRO and, and things like that, where you have um, wholesale control over systems, strategies, you know, and revenue. Right. I think the, the other one, other than CRO, that I've heard is Chief Digital Officer, like a CDO, yeah. I guess, would be the, the acronym. And uh, I, I think you know, it, a person like that is, is going to be invaluable to the CMO who's going to be like, all right, you know, tell me what these digital channels do and how I can max myself in all of these channels. Because you know, you, you're able to wheel in whatever you want. If it's software as a service, you don't even have to talk to IT, right? I mean, I started doing that in you know, 2001, 2000 too, with things like a, a Primo and Marketo and, you know, bringing those in the back door and not really asking the, the uh, uh, CIO. In fact, when I was at Avaya, I often got a little concerned because we spent a lot with uh, a Primo, uh, and, and I knew this was not a priority for my CIO, so I just was like, I, God, I hope this CIO never meets like the CIO or CEO of a Primo, and he's like, hey, thanks for all your business, man, and he's like, he's like what's the name of your company again? I'm gonna, I, I've never heard of you guys, right? And, uh, yeah. 
And then he's like, Dune, how the hell did all this stuff come into you, come into my organization? And I didn't know anything about it, right? And it, you know, because the software is a service, I don't need to tell you about it. And you know, we put it up on the website, and marketing owns the website, and you know, uh, and and you know, on down the line. So. Uh, an interesting dynamic for sure, and I've seen studies that say that marketing is, is going to be, you know, having as much, if not more, technology than the the technology group uh, in the coming years. I can see that because, you know, the the um, IT groups are kind of maxed out as it is, right? They maybe ten or twenty percent of their budget they can use for innovation. Everything else is just keeping the lights on on what they've got, right? right. So they can't help the marketer at all. I mean, you know, when we, even when we're talking to them about web or mobile or social optimization, they're like, we can't get to that. That's got to come out of the marketing budget, and it better be software as a service because, you know, IT isn't going to deal with that. Well, and oftentimes the, the goals of the two, um, the two departments conflict with one another too, and that's that, you know, if you're, if you're in IT, what are you trying to do? You're trying to keep costs low uh, you, because everything's an expense in, in IT. Uh, you're trying to uh, keep everything safe stable, secure, um, less customer support tickets, you know, less, 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 less. That's, yeah. that's kind of the, you know, and when you're in marketing, it's no, we want to test 14 different tools. We want to see what the results are. We want to experiment. We want to take 20% of our budget and do, you know, research with it. We want to, um, we need something slammed together. We need to be agile because, you know, like like you said, you know, Facebook is changing every single day. So we we can't roll something out and then have you know these long processes of you know uh, you know QA testing and and everything that takes a month to roll something out. By the time you roll it out, you, you're dead. And, Absolutely, and, um, yeah. So I, I I push you know I push with our clients that you know your IT department, your I I believe in internal customer service. And that's that, you know, every department within an organization should have internal customers. And in my opinion, you know, the, the IT department shouldn't be ranked based on what their budget and savings are. It should be ranked on what their customer service is, you know, to their customers. You know, so yeah. whether, it's, whether it's desktop support or whether it's the marketing department, they should have the freedom to be able to say, well, I want to please my marketing customer, so I'm going to help them you know, to invest this money and help, you know, take a look at this technology and make sure it's sound and see how we can enable it rather than disable it. Right. Bravo. I mean, I totally aspire to see people or, I'm sorry, organizations, you know, get into that kind of mentality. I, and and uh, some of the places will, which will remain nameless that I've worked at, you know, it just hasn't been that way. It, it's, yeah. been, it's been, a, you know, we're, we, we're, we're, our, we're gold on coming in lower than, uh, lower than budget. And, uh, you know, your project sounds like it's going to be the one that throws us over. So <laughs> you're out of here. Right. You know, exactly. you're so low on the list that we're, we're never going to get to you and uh, you know and then after it. and then after that board meeting it's the next board meeting asking you why you're not getting results <laughs> right right show me your results man <laughs> well, let's take a let's take a short break uh, we'll listen to a few ads and then when we get back um, I want to learn more about you know where people can find you where you're speaking um, you know maybe a little bit more about maximizer obviously there's there's, there's a, a ton of um, you know, features, and, and, and uh, it, it looks like an incredible product. Well, Paul, uh, folks can find you, and, and for people that don't know, it's Paul Dunay, and it's D-U-N-A-Y. So right. Paul du PaulDunay.com, uh, and at, of course at his blog, uh, his blog is Marketing Darwinism, uh, those that don't adapt become irrelevant, and I absolutely love that. Um, <laughs> exactly. Well, I had to change it from marketing technology blog because somebody took it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I still see those. I still see people pop up with that. You know, yeah. my mine was uh, my original blog was uh, called on influence and automation. Oh, and, uh, okay. And uh, which is pretty funny because both are huge terms nowadays. Uh, but back then, nobody was searching or looking for that. So I. I purposely changed. I changed my URL. I changed everything over to Marketing Tech Blog. Uh, um, just, God, just, I, I feel yeah. for you. I remember the pain of doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but anyway, we're not, we're not talking about me. We're talking about you. So, yep. uh, at, at PaulDunay.com, you will find on the right hand side 
Uh, Paul is, of course, on, on Google+. Uh, he is on Facebook. Uh, he is on Twitter. And all of them are Paul Dunay, D-U-N-A-Y, yep, as, as well as LinkedIn. And, and Paul, for folks that don't know, obviously you're, you're an evangelist and, and, and marketer for Maximizer, uh, which is a testing and, uh, should I say testing and automation? Well, it's, be- te- it's, it's really testing personalization and then uh, channel optimization. So, you know, our uh, center of gravity is really around testing. And, and quite frankly, and I don't know if you, how, how much you were into testing as well, but I really, as a marketer, here's the confessional part of this, uh, you know, radio, is I really didn't test all that much. I was uh, right. like, you know, throw it out there, see what happens, right? You know, in, in B2B, you can do that. But, um, you know, we're, we're talking about big name brands, you know, L.L. Bean, uh, IBM, Harry and David, you know, Intercontinental Hotels, you know, big companies. They can't throw anything up on their homepage and forget about it, right? So, uh, so testing is important to them, and it's not just the A-B thing. It's more the multivariate test. So they could test their whole site in, a, in the course of a couple weeks, right, and optimize that experience. And then we take them down a road where it's, all right, well, then, now let's personalize it. Let's create that Amazon-like experience where, you know, you've come back to the site, you looked at this particular vacation spot, let's show it to you again, right? And and people who went here also went here, right? So it's product recommendations, right, that we'll, we'll help them with. And then we'll help them push that experience out from the web to mobile, to tablet, to social. And that, that's where I think it gets really interesting because you look at the numbers around social, uh, I'm sorry, around mobile. I just saw some stats today that were, were mind-blowing around, uh, around mobile about how much commerce is starting to come through there and, and you know, uh, how many people have, uh, you know, smartphones these days and the numbers are getting pretty large right i mean it's you know monthly sales driven from mobile devices has been around a million dollars a month it, it jumped to four million dollars a month in the course of the year right from september to september so you know that that uh, device as a channel is, is really starting to spark up so we don't see people really optimizing those sites uh, I know probably you like I have a plug-in to WordPress that will optimize my blog yep. for for mobile awesome but if you're you know LL Bean you can't put a you know a, a, a plug-in module on your site it just doesn't make right. sense so you, you have to think about what's the ideal experience and all that kind of stuff so um, it, it, there's a lot to be done there I think uh, optimization is a key word for us going forward because I see people spending a lot to drive traffic to these places, but they, they spend you know a tiny fraction. I saw the number was ninety two dollars to send uh, ninety two dollars on average for every dollar uh, they spend on optimization. They spend ninety two dollars on driving traffic, right? So it's way out of whack in that sense. Yeah, I, oh. I absolutely agree. And and I want to you know go back to the mobile optimization. Um, yeah. People need to start thinking about when people are utilizing their mobile devices and what they're using it for. And typically at work, you know, we might have one, two screens at work, but we're busy. We're, you know, we're doing our work. We're bouncing back and forth. We're, you know, we're multitasking. But when people are focused on their mobile device and they're sitting, you know, in a, you know, in a, in a airplane, you know, or at an airport, they're fully concentrating. And and I think the the numbers that I'm seeing and and we have a client uh, ZMags which is a, a digital content publisher mm-hmm. that publishes to mobile and and um, and tablet is the levels of engagement are literally like four times um, the engagement that you get through a web page. Oh, um, nice. So, so people you know people come to a website, glance you know come and go. Uh, but when they come to it on a mobile device, if it's readable and the experience is, is you know, a good experience, they'll stay and they'll stick and they'll, and they'll read a little bit more and they'll go a little bit deeper. And so I, I think it's, um, you know, people's patterns of how they're utilizing these things is, is really unique. And then on the retail side, you're absolutely right. Uh, I think they're seeing, you know, uh, something like five times um, the the – the close rates that they were seeing uh, on other devices when people when people optimize the experience, right, so, right, so exactly, it, and, and not not you know yes my you know like marketing tech blog yes it works on a mobile device but it's not necessarily optimized for you know mobile viewing the way that it could be. Now um, on the back end, I'll tell you that we actually have 
uh, a whole series of mobile apps coming out for Droid and and, um, and iPhone and um, and iPad and, and tablet. So we're excited about that. Uh, but we'll you know I'll I'll make a big announcement about that later. Um, but it, and the reason why is because we we needed quick fast experiences that were unlike the website, um, so that people could engage a little bit deeper and then offer them those calls to actions in a manner that was optimized for the device as well. You know, a big sure. fat banner doesn't work, <laughs> you know, on your on your mobile phone. Um, but a nice, you know, a nice little slide or, you know, uh, you know, GIF pop-up style or something like that does entice people to, to click and makes it easier, you know, to hit it with their thumb. So, yeah, right. you're, you're dead on. I, I, I think that's, that's fantastic. And then the numbers are frightening when it comes to testing, right? You know, what these large companies that really do testing well are able to achieve is absolutely stunning. You know, double doubling and tripling conversion rates. Oh, it is, it is. And if you look at if you and and then you add the personalization piece on there, forget about it. Yeah. I mean, Amazon yeah. converts. Uh, I think it's every sixty six dollars it, it it spends on uh you know on optimizing and personalizing the site, and their and their repeat business is just tremendous, as I'm sure we all can agree to, right? So. Getting that kind of experience out to the masses, you know, making that uh, accessible for the average, you know, small retailer is, is really where we come to play. And that's where it gets really kind of exciting. Because what do you got now? You don't have a lot to differentiate on uh, as a retailer, right? You, you can walk into a retail store. I read a story the other day I tweeted about somebody walked into, a, I think it was Sur La Tabla or one of those uh, cooking stores, couldn't get anyone to service them. So they bought it, you know, off of Amazon while they're standing in the store, right? They were looking at it, yep. you know, didn't have pricing information, didn't have reviews next to it. They needed a, someone to talk to them about it. No one came to talk to them. They opened up their phone while they're waiting. They see the reviews. They see the pricing. And they're like, okay, I'll take it. Done. You know, have her delivered to the house. And then they're going to start delivering it same day. I mean, you know, what do you got in, you know, as a, as a way to differentiate the experience? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you're, you're dead on. And, and that's what people want. You know, the other bad thing that's going on is, you know, all of these privacy screens and yells and, and everything else is people don't realize that, um, you know, there's a balance. There's a balance of giving up enough privacy to let people know, to let these companies know how to optimize the experience to, to, to what you want it to be. And, uh, and I, you know, hopefully, hopefully, you know, companies get a little bit better at that explaining, right. hey, we're collecting this data because here's how we're enhancing the experience with that data. Uh, um, right, exactly, exactly. Too, too many, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a nutcase anarchist just like, <laughs> just like the rest of them. Uh, but when it, when it comes to privacy, it's a, I look at it as a, as a trade. You know, if I trade my privacy to this vendor, um, they're going to enhance my experience. I want Amazon to make recommendations to me. I want to open up a web page and have what I'm looking for sitting right there on the, on on the front of it. Um, and and I hope, like I said, I hope companies get a little bit better at that too. Right, and, and uh, you know that's a big issue, especially in Europe. I'm, I'm seeing that yes. a lot in Europe, uh, Germany, UK. You know, if you're collecting anonymous information and not telling people, that's uh, you know there are several ways people are dealing with it. One is ignoring it. The other way is being very upfront about it, and then there's the in between. And I think we're going to start to see some of that over here. Well, it's it's fascinating too. The the default in Europe is off, right? The, right. The, you know, you have to start with collecting nothing, and then slowly get permission to. And and in America, it's you know we're the wild west. Uh, yeah. You know, people that have never marketed or right. or in Europe don't have a clue what it's like. Yeah, it's always on all the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Well, this this has been spectacular. Now, are you speaking anywhere soon? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Speaking of mobile, I, I do a uh, mobile uh, webinar uh, for Social Media Today, uh, Tuesday at twelve o'clock Eastern, uh, this coming Tuesday, and then I'm talking about customer engagement at the customer engagement technology world, of course, uh, at the Jacob Javits Center in New York City on uh, November seventh and eighth. Uh, so I'll be running a, a session there as well. So. 
Um, I'm trying to keep my, my travel to a minimum these days. I, I, I've been on the road, or I've been on the road quite a bit, uh, speaking, uh, you know, globally about the books and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I'm happy to have some, you know, local, small, easy to do kind of uh, kind of events. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, send me send me a link to that, and I'll I'll put that out there to the to the folks as well. Oh, sure. Let them know awesome. where you're speaking next, and and uh, of course. Of course, I th- I think if someone goes to the marketing tech blog and sees where we announced your your show, they'll they'll be able to get to your site through there. But anything else you want to add? No, that's it, man. It's great to talk to you again, and uh, you know, let's let's make this uh, more frequent. It doesn't have to be so long in between. Yeah, absolutely, Paul. It's always a pleasure, and and I hope our paths cross. You're one of those rare guys that I think you know we've known each other virtually now for seven years, and and, yeah. and we haven't actually shaken hands yet. I so, know it. I know it. Just I've, don't be I've surprised. Seen... Just don't yeah. be surprised at how fat I am. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> All right, Paul. Great to talk to you. All right. Thanks very thanks, much, Doc. Take thanks care. Thanks for taking the time. Right on. Bye. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather.